This weekend's mass shooting in Buffalo once again highlighted the devastating impact of gun violence in this country. It is a problem all too familiar to many Americans, and specifically young people. In 2020, guns became the leading cause of death for children, surpassing fatalities from car accidents. Activists across the country are working to shed light on this issue through a series of plays written and performed by young adults, many of whom have had direct experience experience with gun violence. Jeffrey Brown has the story for our arts and culture series, Canvas. You know, I usually would let you go, but it was a shooting down there Well, I know y'all be hanging, and I just don't want nothing to happen to you, JJ. At New York City's Lincoln Center, the reading of a play about a woman who lost her husband to gun violence and now fears the worst for her son. It was written by 18-year-old Taylor Lafayette. I really hope that my play, amongst others that were written, bring that change forth, that this cannot keep happening. You got three seconds that I'm taking it out your pockets. I ain't got enough. Three. All right, chill, look. The money ain't with Two. In Tempe, Arizona, a performance about a boy who witnesses his older brother's murder and weighs whether to take revenge. One of the student actors, Byron Roberson, Jr. It's a part of life that you never want to face, but it's also one that you can't act as if it's not there. Ignorance isn't bliss when you're talking about this subject. Information, knowledge, that's the power. The performances were part of Hashtag Enough, Plays to End Gun Violence, a project written and acted by young people, expressing their anger, frustration, and fear. Earlier this spring, on April 20th, the anniversary of the 1999 Columbine, Colorado school shooting, eight plays were performed in 29 states across the country, including Pittsburgh. Please walk by faith, please. And Suitland, Maryland. God, please don't kill us. It's not me. I don't have a choice. We Scenes evoked the aftermath of a mass shooting. Another gun, another shooting. It shouldn't have happened. The trauma that endures when a loved one is lost. My mom cries every day now, staring at the spot in the street where her baby boy's body lay. When I started this project, I told Hashtag you Enough is the brainchild of Michael Cody, a director and producer based in Chicago. In 2018, he was in a professional theater rehearsal when the Parkland, Florida shooting left 17 dead. It just took over the entire vibe of the rehearsal. And then my memory of it is that 10 minutes later, we got back to work working on plays. And I, that really left an unsettling feeling for me. What was the feeling? Frustrated that these things kept happening or feel like they keep happening. And like, what am I doing in the theater? Or like, more specifically, like, what could we be doing with the theater to address this directly? His idea, let young people be the storytellers. They're able to put a story behind these awful, enormous numbers that should just drive us insane to do something about it, but somehow don't. And I think that's what theater provides, this uh, cathartic sense of where some people can go to express their grief and their anger and their trauma, but do that within their community. A space that small, a weapon like that, it doesn't take more than a few minutes. We rehearse it maybe 20 times a Friday. In 18-year-old Willa Kaliri's play Rehearsal, a group of students and a teacher become obsessed with rehearsing a school shooting simulation. It's had such an effect on, you know, the, the psyche of people like me, American teenagers, anyone who has to go to school. And it's very rare that you get the opportunity to write about something that is so important on such a, like, national, if not global scale. Like many teens, Kaliri, who lives in Los Angeles, has grown up in an America where school shooting drills are part of everyday life. I go to school and all these very normal, sort of banal things are happening. I'm doing schoolwork, I'm thinking about lunch, and then on like beneath that there's this weird undercurrent of anxiety about gun violence and, you know, looking around a room, where would I hide? Or there's like a door that slams really hard somewhere and, and you know immediately that it's not, you know, what you think it is, but I think there's always this um, feeling of worry around it. In Tempe, Arizona, Byron Roberson acted in a presentation of Kaleri's play and found the experience cathartic. A creative workspace is the best workspace, in my opinion, and when you're around people that make difficult things easy to talk about, it definitely helps a lot. 
A freshman at Arizona State University, Roberson has lost both family and friends to gun violence. I feel that the underlining thing is to understand and acknowledge what people do and to have that conversation about people, and this is one of those ways to have that conversation. It's a conversation all too familiar for Arizona State Representative Jennifer Longden, who was shot and paralyzed 18 years ago. She was in the audience in Arizona and joined a post-performance discussion. I found it really very intense, um, very true to life. Um, uh, I found myself holding my breath several points along the way. I think that it provides an outlet for uh, the creators and the, the performers, and I think it's educational to the audience. For her part, Taylor Lafayette traveled to New York from her home in Benoit, Mississippi. She's been writing since childhood, she told us, but this play was her most personal, a way to cope after losing her younger brother to gun violence. He was 16, so very young, not even getting a chance to graduate high school, see senior year, and the fact that I do, I just, I like to use that as motivation to keep going, actually. Why, why does art become the way to help you do that? Enough definitely drove me to see that I can use my voice as something more than just a way to release my own emotions. I can use it to cause change. I don't want to keep my writing to myself. I want it to be in the world because I feel that's where it needs to be. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown. Enough! Enough! A moment of uplift that we needed tonight. Thank you, Jeffrey Brown.